بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله وكفى سلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أفضل الصلاة وأزكى التسليم على المرسول رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد looking at the <coughs> the Huruf of the Quran and the seven principal words that they that they form sometime in understand in order to understand the the true meaning of his words, you have to experience them, as usual experience is the best way of knowing something. And these are the words through which Allah tries his, those, his chosen ones. Like uh, we see in the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim, where he was salam in Baqarah. Verse 124 of Baqarah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ibrahim
question. Allah just said, try it. So Ibrahim threw his words, kalimat, <coughs> and did he fulfill them? When he fulfilled them, then he appointed him as, as a leader for the humankind. I don't know how many words he tried him through, but <coughs> it's, a, it's in plural form, the kalimatin. فَأَتَمَّهُنَّ So these are like exercises that Allah put on us. If you fulfill the exercise, you fulfill the word. And Allah will deem you fit to be a leader or to whatever. <coughs> so now Ibrahim, we know some of them. We threw him in the in the fire. And, uh, Allah test tried him through the sacrifice of his son and many others. <coughs> So he withstood, he, mashallah, he stood the, all the trials and, and he triumphed. After all the tri those trials, then only then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him for imamat. Think about that, imam al-kubra, which is the greater imam of khilafah. these trials cause <coughs> some are harder than others depending on how much capacity your heart has because hearts are the same but they have different capacities if you put one capacity in another it may not be able to withstand it because it is not, it's not wide enough to contain it. <coughs> in verse 31 in Surah 2 Muhammad verse 31 وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ حَتَّى نَعْلَمَ الْمُجَاهِدِينَ مِنْكُمْ وَالصَّابِرِينَ وَنَبْلُوَ أَخْبَارَكُمْ
Sini Surat Surat Muhammad Baz 31 The number of the surah itself 47 We'll try you until we na'alam, until we know, Allah already know, until we mark out the mujahideen and the sabirin. Mujahideen here means muhsineen. Normally, Quran, when it talks about jihad, it means ihsan. <coughs> To mark that out. Note that. So until we know the Muhsinin and the Sabirin among you, we will know the Sabr and Sabr and Ihsan are one of the words, which, and we have seen them, one of the words through which Allah will test you. <coughs> Sabr, like Ihsan, also Jihad. Because the true Jihad is to is to be able to maintain Ihsan, as 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 this, as defined in the Hadith, and to Abdullah ka'annaka tarahu. You you serve Allah as though you see Him. This is the greatest Jihad. You get from the jihad, they call it jihad al-akbar, that's ihsan. Man ta'abud Allah, ka annaka tarahu, fa in lam takun tarahu, fa innahu yaraka. You worship Allah as though you see him, if you don't see him. You know that he sees you. That is, that's the true jihad. The other forms of jihad, as we, as you, as you will know it, is the lesser forms of jihad. Nothing compared to ihsan. <coughs> So usually when Quran says Mujahideen, it's talking about the Muhsineen, people who have attained the level of Ihsan in their worship. They serve Allah as though they see Him. So we'll test you until we establish, it's established who among you have sabr. Sabr is a complete who fulfill the word of Sabr or fulfill the word of Ihsan. When Ibrahim fulfilled them, Atamahunna. Hmm. He said, Is a word actually is made of, of letters? Hmm. So if you fulfill one of them, that means you have not completed the word. So you can have Sabr partly, not you have not fulfilled the word of Sabr completely. Sabr is made of what? Now? Elma? Okay. <coughs> Helm? So 
if you if you have one of one of them will not qualify you as a complete sadr you have helm you don't have ilm it's half that's part of it or part of helm uh, because each of them also can have smaller fraction ilm is has many many degrees so you have to have ilm and have helm then Allah will write you your name as a sadr among the sadr you have fulfilled a word and that alone may take you a lifetime just to be able to fulfill a word if you fulfill a word we talk about all the seven <coughs> so Ihsan is made of what? those everybody should know them by heart because <laughs> if you don't know them you can't even work on them <laughs> you don't know what, what they are <coughs> should know all the seven words and their huruf by heart. Now, what was it? What was? Sama. Khawf. Close Tama. If you have only fear of God, you don't have hope in God, then your ihsan is one-sided. If you only have hope in God and you don't have fear of Him also, your ihsan is incomplete. You have to have both sides to fulfill the word of ihsan. So Allah will try you through both. As He said, وَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ You see? الجوعي ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات بصير الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون الله يريد تراي يترو ليتل بيت أف here نبل ونكم شيء من الخوف والجوع and hunger not necessarily physical hunger because fear is not necessarily physical the lack of fulfillment is hunger your heart can be hungry because you don't feel fulfilled, even though <coughs> your body is, is, is not hungry. Mm. So he means hunger generally. And reduction in property. And in life. And in children. Then Obashir is Sabirin. Give good news to the Sabirin. Something bad is coming after all that. <coughs> so very often the the two, these two, Ihsan and Sabr are, they come often very, very often together because they lead to one another. And all the seven, they are all intertwined, as you will see, inshallah. In many ayahs where they are combined, both of them, Sabr and combined with Taqwa, and Taqwa with Ihsan, Ihsan with Sabr. And so they, so comp words, while the words are made of letters, let they come by compound words too. Word plus word. <coughs> uh, it goes on. Yeah. Usually they use it for that, but it, here, here it means hope. Hope. That means a strong desire for the, for the, for the mercy of Allah. 
فاذ طمعا وخوفا الطمع في رحمه الله is like when normally when you see a flash of lightning that's why Allah normally do every word is used a lot there's analogy in the Quran يُرِيكُمُ الْبَرْخَ خَوْفًا وَتَمْعًا Allah shows you the flash of lightning as a bringer of fear and hope and sometimes it flashes and you think about a thunder, thunderstruck so that, that is a warning but you think about the rain of behind that that gives you hope so you see the so <laughs> for those who have ihsan to in the same manner when they they have visions of God where they see manifestation of his majesty and they feel fear for some time then followed by a manifestation of his beauty then they feel hope <laughs> but that's the level that ihsan will give that's why i said to worship allah as though you see him Good. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Those who have truly have ihsan, they know what's going on. So they do have fear of God. They don't look at the, the problem. They look at the, exactly as the manifestation of God's majesty. Mm. And then the, <coughs> I guess, explained by الحديث that إذا أراد الله أن يخفف إباده تجلى للأرض فتجلزل that when Allah wants to warn his slaves he will reveal himself manifest himself to the earth and the earth will will tremble causing floods and, and earthquakes and so forth but if he does really want to, wants to punish them he will remove the veil completely and the earth will that part of the earth will break so those are the primary causes the scientific reasons are just the, the outward manifestation of earthquake but the, pro the primary cause is Allah SWT, of course <coughs> we don't see that but the Muslim sees that they look at the, the primary causes of what, what goes on in the hadith of Sayyidina Aisha that when when it began when before it rains then that each time there is rain about to come she noticed that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he keeps on pacing in, in the room he goes forth back and forth and back and forth mm. so one day she asks she said, when I, whenever I see that it's going to rain I see you concerned she said yes because his heart is, is alive. Rain is not a it's, it's not just a phenomenon as we as we think about it. There's something behind it. He said to her that that it's through rain cloud that Allah destroys some nations like Ad. They saw the cloud, they said this is a rain cloud. It rained down as a punishment. So he said, I have no guarantee that something similar can happen to my nation too so he's concerned until it begins to rain then he calms down his fears goes away but that is the sign of a heart that's a knowing heart you know a heart that has ihsan he sees God's pr presence in every phenomenon around us <coughs> Go back to Surah to Ali Imran. one forty two 
أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة ولما يعلم الله الذين جاهدوا منكم ويعلم الصابرين for the two Similarly, to enter Jannah too, you have to go through these trials. Am hasibtum an tadukhul Jannah? You think you will enter Jannah before Allah? Hmm? Marks out who among you have strove truly in his way in terms of jihad. Those who have attained ihsan among you. And those who have attained sabr, patience and steadfastness, among again we see the combination between the two, mm. sabr and jihad fi sabilillah, and strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. to Ankabut in verse 69 which is the last verse of the surah وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ
the end of the verse, explain the beginning of the verse, you see. That's why I wanted you to have a look at the verse. So he, those who strive, Allah called them muhsinin at the end of the verse. Just to show you that ihsan and jihad, they mean the same thing in the Quran. To follow the path, the word of Allah with ihsan. go back to Ali Imran so again we see the the um, the, the, um, the tight connection between Sawr and Ihsan throughout this surah <laughs> Verse 146 to 148. Hmm. Okay, I'm in Nabi, I'm going to tell him how to be you, and I'm going to tell him how to be you, and I'm going to tell him how to be you, and I'm going to tell him how to be you, and I'm going to tell him how ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين فأعطاهم الله ثواب الدنيا وحسن الثواب الآخرة والله يحب المحسنين نعم
think uh, if you look at the verses themselves, they explain sort of the word of the meaning of sabr and ihsan. <coughs> so, in the light of what we know about ihsan and sabr, verse 146, what are the elements of sabr in the verse? What are the what words indicate the meaning of kind of carry the meaning of sabr? Huh? Why do we see helm here? Why why is helm there in this verse? Mm-hmm. Hell my land doesn't make up sabr. So I should about to explain the meaning of those two in brief. <coughs> is forbearance. Where do we see the meaning of helm and elm translated in, in this verse? Where do we see, how does it translate into this verse? No, in that verse you, you see only the 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 uh, yeah all the words in the verse are the are the contraries of the words that should normally make up the meaning of helm and elm wahan and daaf we discussed probably these these words a long time ago daaf is weakness which is Against what word? The word Dof is against what word? Now, in Arabic, so the word strength in, in English does not Kuwa, that's true. Qawiyun. Allahu Allah, the Quran didn't explain itself anyway. Allah Allah khalqakum min da'afin thumma ja'ala min ba'du da'afin quwwatan so so quwwa quwwa strength or power of 
opposite of Dav. This verse is used only with the word Dav, which implies Kuwa on the other side. So, Fama Dafu, they did not feel weak. Because Sabr does not, is, that's no, Sabr is not weak in front of his challenges and difficulties, it's strong. So, Quwa and Da'af. <coughs> so, Quwa is an aspect of, of, of Sabr. So, we have the word also, Fama Wahnu, <coughs> Wahan. We have the word Wahan. Now, what does wahan mean? In order to understand the opposite, you have to know what it means first. No, it's the kind of giving in. Hmm? No, that's hayin. Wahan. Has a meaning a little bit of that, but um, um, what does the translation say about what? No? Fragile is good. They, uh, what would they use? Alam, what did they uh, say about Fama Wahanu? The first one, no, the first one, Fama Wahanu, lose heart. Fama Wahanu. Sometimes, some, sometimes I bet. And yours this is what? Yeah. Wahan, what did what word? The same thing. Yeah. Huh? Is that is the opposite. Exactly. Wahan? Is our shidda, so shidda and ijza mean the same thing. Shidda, izza. Once you know the meaning of izza, then you know the opposite is wahan. Hmm? That means strength, and power and strength are different. Kuwa is power, izza is strength. It means something that is able to stand. Well, mm, that's what is. So when something is crumbling, cannot cannot stand. Farm is wahan. It's falling down. So in a way, it has has a vertical sense, strength in the vertical dimension. As opposed to Kuwa, which is horizontal. Let's make it easy. <coughs> so, Fama Wahnu, Oma Ta'fu. They did not lose their Izza or their Kuwa. They remain Izza or Akwiya. But Izza, and as well, a human being does not have neither of these two. It's not born with any Izza or Kuwa. There are some things that he gives him this from Allah, Allah's qualities that comes to him, and he earns these qualities too. Izza and Kuwa is Allah's who is Qawi and Aziz. Unless a human being is able to drive this power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by worshipping him, by serving him. So which of Allah's qualities give the Izzah 
How do we attain Izzah? Okay, remembering, the remembrance has many, many branches. I, I, I got your point. <laughs> it's right, too. <coughs> what, exactly. What, what, what quality, what, do, what does a human being earn to give him the Izzah, to, to give him the strength? Okay, Fikr. Fikr is broad. What, ca- what type of fikr? As you say, fikr is true, or fikr. But in relation to what? Mm-hmm. Okay. But how will all that come bring us back to the meaning of sabr as we <laughs> as, as we outlined it. We say sabr is hilm and ilm. Huh? How will all that come back to that? Okay. Strand, yes in huwa is is an aspect of iman. It's faith that gives you huwa. <coughs> and it's ilm, knowledge. So we see how the how different their impact is on us. It's the ilm that gives you shidda, mm? strength, not power. They're different. As you gain more knowledge, you become stronger. And as you gain more Iman, you become more and more powerful. <coughs> so, and Helm is just it's an aspect of Iman. Helm is, as a root, comes from Iman. Because these are the two things, Iman and Ilm, everything draws from them. So, Helm, helm which is one aspect of Sabr, comes from Iman. A mu'min has its forbearing, that's, that's an aspect. <coughs> and ilm, we say khashya, but we don't have the khashya, <coughs> which is sharid, shidda. So with the combination of both of them, we have sabr. So a sabr is shadid and is khawi too. Somebody who has sabr is patient uh, because he has iman and ilm. He is strong, he is powerful because of his iman. It's not from his himself. This is something that Allah gives you because of your iman. And Allah, by giving you knowledge, He gives you strength as well. You stand firm and straight. Mm. So knowledge makes you stand firm and not fall. And iman makes you powerful. You don't you don't swerve sideways. Mm. So vertically and horizontally you are well established. As opposed to somebody who does not have this or that. Now 
yes, it's an aspect because Adil also is up to be just, you have to be straight, yes. Adil has to be straight and, and, and upright. Yeah, Adil is a derivative of knowledge. Yeah. Both of them come through Zikr. <laughs> okay, as you said earlier, of Shikr. Through, through Zikr, Allah gives you knowledge and, and, and Iman. Yeah, both. But that's the root of everything, is dhikr. And through dhikr, all this comes. Yeah. And then from that, the qualities develop, <coughs> as we see. So, f- now? Nah? Can you make you salim? Halim, yeah, of course. Naturally. Naturally, of course. That's the only way to make you a alien. It's only bigger. There's no other way. This <coughs> Iman. So, فَمَا وَحْنُوا لِمَا أَصَابَهُمْ They did not uh, become fragile and fragmented uh, in front of what happened to them in the face of their hardships in the world of Allah. وَمَا ضَعْفُوا did not become weak neither. Hmm? That's the consequence. Dolf yeah. and Wahan leads you to, to become submissive in front of your problems, to give in, to cover. Istikana, which is now Istislam, hmm? to surrender in the face of your difficulties. Yeah, I, cannot, I cannot do it anymore. I can't fight anymore. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> but this one, if it's the kind of for Allah, that's what we want. But it's kind of in front of your problem. That's what I'm saying. You don't give in to your problem. And said, no, I cannot struggle. I cannot fight my problems anymore. No, you may you do give in to Allah. That's what we want you. <laughs> not to your problems, not to surrender to your problems, and and go on your knees. <coughs> so, so that is sabu. Now we move to ihsan. Is that clear now? Uh, questions. So the thing with them is very is very easy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Is that if if this struggle is with with let's say with um, a, con- a contending party, for example, Allah says that's another. We we'll go back to surah. We we'll come back to again the surah to Muhammad. We'll see Allah talks about not giving in. Uh. <laughs> Verse 35 huh? of, of Surah 2, Muhammadin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَلَا تَهِنُوا وَتَرْعُوا إِلَى وَتَرْعُوا إِلَى السَّلْمِ وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ وَاللَّهُ مَعَكُمْ وَلَا يَتْرَاكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ فَلَا تَهِنُوا وَتَرْعُوا إِلَى السَّلْمِ وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ وَاللَّهُ مَعَكُمْ وَلَا يَتْرَاكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ أَمْ Well, 
you see, that's one that's one way. Hmm? Because you are you fe you are feeling uh, weak, you cry for peace. Let's make peace now. That peace, Allah doesn't accept that. He doesn't make peace from his from a point from a point of weakness. Because that's a that's a peace without choice. You make peace out of choice. Hmm? You can fight, but you want to make peace. So that peace is mean is meaningful. If you ask for peace because you cannot, you are losing because you feel weak. That's not a peace that Allah accepts. Hmm? They are giving in. So that's one aspect of uh, false peace, as it says. So ولا تهنوا وتروا إلى السلم وأنتم الأعلون والله معكم. Going back to Surah Al Imran itself. One forty. No, one thirty nine and one forty. ولا تهنوا again ولا تحزنوا. You see. Quran explain itself so clearly. Here he replaced the word the word khawf is not there. Only the word wala tahzanu wala tahinu wala tahzanu wa antum al a'launa in kuntum mu'minin iyamzatkum qarh qad massa al qawma qarhum misluhu وتلك الأيام يداولها بين الناس وليعلم الله الذين آمنوا ويتخذ منكم شهداء والله لا يحب الظالمين ألم explanation of this word Wahan again is explained further in this verse uh, so this fragility and this feebleness also is caused its cause is grief hmm? so that's it that's the father cause so Wahan also, <coughs> the cause of Wahan is Huzan. Hmm? So grief leads to Wahan. <coughs> and 
what about dof? What's the cost of a dof? Yeah, exactly. Hope. Not fear of God, of course. Again, it comes back to the, our primary discussion, which is fear and hope. Uh, fear and, and grief are always at the root of the other, all the other symptoms. Mm. Those are two primary enemies mm, that Shaitan uses to, to, to push you to give in to him or to his allies. Yes, uh, those are the weapons. So fear brings weakness in your heart. Grief brings feebleness into your heart. And then you surrender and call out for peace. <coughs> no sabo. Allah said, if you are hurt, they also were hurt. Does it mean that believers has to win all the time? No. <laughs> you win sometime, you lose sometime. That's how that's how Allah set it up. They will not win all the time. But losing also is part of getting close to God as much as winning. You don't assume that okay, I'm fighting in God's way, I have to win all the time. No. So Allah said we 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 go with with we make it by turn between people some lose today some win tomorrow some lose today some win tomorrow but the believer is beyond all that those changes and the chances of time and and and, and situations iman transcends all that if you have iman if you win doesn't change anything in you if you if you lose doesn't change anything in you so a moment transcends all these vicissitudes of life. Mm-hmm. So, is that what Yes. That's why we'll see in the next ayah. When Ihsan kicks in too, hmm? because if somebody is always winning and is not losing, he will not know God except through one way. Hmm? He will not know Him completely. You will to Him in a, dif- in a different manner when he, when you lose than when you win. We try you through, through hardship and through ease, both. But all are meant to bring you back to us. If it is ease, bring you back to God. If it is hardship, harm, to bring you back to God. That's the point. Either way, whatever, you remain open to it. Whatever Allah chooses to, to try you through, Of course, the example of we see the example of that all the time, uh, and the Muslims they won Badr and they lose in Ahud. And when some people come to Allah say no, you had you had inflicted twice as much harm to them. If you lose now, you lose. <laughs> so.
So we go to we continue with 147 and 48, which is Ihsan. <laughs> وحسن الثواب الآخرة والله يحب المحسنين يحب المحسنين so after all that happened to them they did not get weak they did not become fragmented. They did not su surrender. And they continue still to pray. Hmm? All they said, they did not complain. All that they said, they said, Rabban aghfillana dhunubana. Allah forgive us our sins. Israfana fi amrina and our transgression in our affair. Usabit aqidamana and make our foot strong. Usabit aqidamana. Stand firm. Wansurna ala al qawm al kafirin and give us victory over those who deny you. As Ihsan. Hmm. So Ihsan, how, what is Ihsan here? In terms of hope and wataman. So Ihsan is hope and fear. What is that? come in this in this verse ربنا اغفر لنا ذنوبنا واسرافنا في امرنا وثبت اقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين فاتاهم الله ثواب الدنيا وحسن ثواب الاخره فاجد رباتنا في الدنيا حسنا so muhsinin they have hasana in this dunya and hasana in the hereafter where does Ihsan here come? Oh, so we're done with that now. some a mic go around when people answer the question I think it will help to those who are watching they can, they can hear it as we said that the two the first two elements is fear Allah Rabbana fi lana zunubana wa israfana fi amrina and the last two is hope which is usabit aqdamana wa unsurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin Does that make sense? What do you think? Uh, what answer do you have? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So where is the where is the where is Khawfa and Tama? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, what about the rest of the ayah? What else? صرفنا في أمرنا وصرنا على القوم الكافرين So the first we think is Raja, Tama, and the last two Khauf, that's the opposite of what he said. What do you think? Okay. Attend their goal. Mm-hmm. So that means you think that the first two are khawf and the last two are raja, tama. Side. The side. The side. The side. What else? Aisha, what do you think? Aisha Sayyid? Okay, so what is the element of fear and hope? I guess Ihsan. Where is the fear here and where is the hope? Mm-hmm. What's the fear? Okay. Okay, so that's what the sister said. So, hope at the beginning and fear at the end. <laughs> yes, any other suggestion? case you think that the first part is the fear and the last part is the hope okay <laughs> now you got your chance now you <laughs> you got your chance you <laughs> okay
Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. <coughs> let's let's look at them. Um, we'll come back to that. <laughs> <laughs> comes first in terms of huh? an ex expansion so yeah if you go b based on that in, in base of Hainamal uh, also use Torah because it's good to have expansion at the end not at the beginning and the ex ex expansion and ending has always to be you know the easier part and difficulty has to be at the beginning it's, it's better that way than the other way around so normally the other way around is about it's, it's the wrong way to have it easy at the beginning and to have it hard at the end. That's not it's good. Inshallah, I'm not, I'm not taking any sides so far. I want us to look at some more examples. Maybe you have a more clear. <laughs> I'm not making any decision. <coughs> like this one. verse um, 90 so now we are talking about dua here and in the context of dua so that's an example of dua in terms of its uh, 90 in Surah Al-Anbiya فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ وَوَهْنَا لَهُ يَحْيَا وَأَصْلَهْنَا لَهُ زَوْجَةِ إِنَّهُمْ كَانُوا يُسَارِعُونَ فِي الْخَيْرَاتِ وَيَدُعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا وَكَانُوا لَنَا خَاشِعِينَ I'll give you some of that good reminder to broaden your the word khawf have other rahab is also used it is used in this verse here rahaban rahaban hmm. sometimes the word hadar we'll see is used hadar and raja so if you know all these verses all these are used also. They all mean the same thing. Khawf, Rahab, Hadar, Tama, Rahab, Raja, they all mean the same thing. Quran use all of them alternatively. <coughs> so this verse here has used the word Rahaban wa Rahaban instead of Khawfan wa Tama'an or Hadaran wa Raja'an. Mm -hmm, Adam? So they used to call on Allah, Rahaban wa Rahaban. It's very important. I mean, they used to call with Ihsan. Rahaban wa Rahaban. And consequently, they get the answer. Because, Inna rahmatullahi qaribu min al muhsin We'll see that too. Allah's Rahmah is close to those who are in Ihsan. So if you call, you make your dua in Ihsan, Rahmah will come. Meaning that dua has to contain elements of khawf and raja, both. Then your supplication is, is, is right. And the answer will be instant. I'm saying that uh, what the ayah is saying that they call on Allah out of hope and fear, both. So their dua is, 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 is dua that is done with ihsan. And consequently, rahmah comes to them.
when we ask Allah for forgiveness, we don't, it doesn't mean that we sin. Because we have done some sin, we ask Allah, no. A human being has to ask Allah anyhow for forgiveness in any case. A human being, how can he be free of sin? Whether he know or not. <laughs> so that's part of being a good slave to ask Allah in any case for forgiveness, istighfar. Hmm? It doesn't mean that you have, you have done something that you know. Exactly, exactly. It may be exactly. Yes, all that. All that. Anything that is a veil, the word them consists of, the, pr the primary meaning is a veil. We want to remove all veil between us and Allah. So we have veils that are there without sinning. They are, we have already veiled between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sinning only makes those veils thicker and more complicated. Yeah, that's why, we, that's why we said to ask him out of hope, because hope means at a time that you have nothing to worry about. So when you ask him out of hope and fear, then you ask him in all situations, because either he might be either this or that. Either you are in a good situation where you have in a hope, or you are in a fear. Either this or that. So in any, if you ask him in, in all situations, then you ask him with ihsan. But some will only go back to him when they are in a hardship. And it just happens sometimes too that sometimes some will uh, only go to him. They only remember him when he gives them something, when they are in a good time. Uh, when they have a hard time, they turn against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, okay, I will, everything was nice for me. Why is it hard now? They turn away. So they turn away in both people, but turn away in both cases. Some in good cases, they turn away from him. Some in hard cases, they turn away from him too. So in any case, you have to turn to him and ask him whether I think the situation is good or bad. That's ihsan. And then you say, khawfan, khawfan and an tama. <coughs> uh, let's go to al-A'raf. What time is it?